phone. So I will um, call this meeting to order. Uh, annual meeting of the town of Rochester. Welcome everyone. I'm Dan McKinley. I'm your moderator, uh, at least until the first article, um, where we elect the moderator for the ensuing year. Um, I'm happy to serve uh, this past year. Um, we'll see how, how that turns out. Um, I would like to share an invocation that's being used in a lot of town meetings um, around the state. And it uh, just sort of focuses us and, and uh, revisits the theme of, of community. Uh, welcome to the Rochester Town Meeting. We've come together in civil assembly as a community in a tradition that is older than our state itself. We come together to make decisions about our community. As we deliberate, let us advocate for our ideas, but not at the expense of others. Let us remember that there is an immense gap between saying, I am right, and saying, I believe I am right. Let us remember that there is an, that, and, and, and that our neighbors with whom we disagree are good people, with hopes and dreams as true and as high as ours. Let us always remember that in the end, caring for each other in this community is of far greater import importance than any difference we may have. So if you would um, stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, if you can. Gentlemen, remove your hats. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah. I want to go over, go over a few things before we dive into the business of the evening. Um, remember that uh, meetings are governed by state law and Robert's rules of order. Oh, I think that volume just go up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Nick. Um, meetings are governed by state law and Robert's rules of order. And I'm going to remind us of a few of General Robert's rules uh, to make things go sm smoother. Um, the business that we're going to conduct tonight is on pages four and five of your town report. Um, you may speak twice to an article, once when recognized by the moderator for the first time, and a second time when anyone else who wishes to speak has spoken for a first time. And you'll be limited to five minutes, if you please, um, to your remarks each time. Um, if you're able, please stand and use the loudest voice you can so we all can benefit from your ideas and your wisdom. Um, sorry we don't have a microphone to run around to you all. Um, <clears throat> for non-election articles, we'll attempt to decide uh, by voice vote. And if that proves difficult, and we will have a division of the house by raising of hands and, um, and, and count hands. At the request of one voter, um, we can do a division of the house. Um, if that still proves difficult or there's any controversy there, um, someone can ask for a paper ballot. And if there are six other voters who would like to um, uh, agree with that, then we would have a paper ballot. Um, remind you that select board, lister, auditor, road commissioner are some of the offices that require a paper ballot by state law. Uh, remember that debate can be stopped or, or cut off um, during, a, uh, during a, um, an article by calling the question or previous question. However, you have to wait to be recognized before you can call that question. You can't just shout, call the question, you can't just shout it out. I have to wait for the moderator to um, recognize you. And then um, two-thirds of, of, um, of the assembly must vote to, um, to stop debate. Um, speeches or your remarks must be combined to the merits of the question, and no one will be allowed to, um, to um, engage in personal attacks of anyone else in the room. The role of the moderator is help you accomplish your business expeditiously and fairly. Please raise your hand, and I'll recognize you in the order that I see your hands come up. Uh, please state your name for the record, and um, uh, speak as loudly as you can. I will try to recognize you by name, but um, I'll blame the lights and masks and uh, many other things on why I might not remember your name, even if I've known you for 30 years. 
Um, so uh, please excuse me if I have a, have a lapse there. Um, I want to remind you that a moderator's ruling can be challenged, and I encourage you to do that. It is um, my goal to do the will of the assembly, um, not my own agenda. Um, you need not be recognized by the moderator uh, with your hand raised before you uh, wish, if you wish to challenge. Just call out you want to challenge that ruling, Mr. Moderator. And if there's a second, then I will explain the ruling, and then everyone gets to speak once on that, and then um, we'll have a vote on whether my ruling is sustained or not. But please do not hesitate if my ruling seems odd or wrong or um, to, to challenge. It's uh, part of the process to do the, the will of the assembly. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, similarly, if you think I'm violating Robert's rules, please call out point of order, and I'll consider your concern. I'm um, your moderator, but by no means an expert. Doing this once a year, I'm not quite uh, uh, have it all memorized yet. Um, the moderator can use unanimous consent, allowing the assembly to do business in expedited fashion rather than following the rules, uh, asking for a motion, a second, a debate, and then a vote. Uh, for example, if someone wanted to speak for a third time on an article, um, we would could suspend, suspend the rules and say um, they could speak again if there are no objections. But if someone objects to suspending the rules um, or any unanimous consent, um, please just call out, I object, and then it would take two-thirds vote to suspend the rules. Um, so please, um, as I'm using unanimous consent, I'm not trying to bulldoze you, but um, if you're concerned about it, please um, object, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask those that are not registered voters of Rochester to raise their hands so we can uh, welcome our guests and know um, who we have. Got a couple folks. Welcome. Um, thanks for coming out tonight. Um, uh, we'll remind you that unless um, there's a suspension, suspension of the rules that non-voters may not speak or, or, or vote, or non-residents may not speak or vote on any articles. But it's our custom here in Rochester to allow um, our visitors to speak on, on um, matters of the town. Um, I wish to use unanimous consent to um, say that, and if there are no objections, once again, we'll um, allow our visitors to, to speak. Okay. Um, don't have any opening remarks from the select board, but we do have a, a representative White here this evening, and um, we'd like to share a few words with you uh, to open us up and see what's going on uh, in the state. Kirk, you want to come right up? Good evening, everyone. Um, it's great to, to actually be in person with you all. Uh, my name is Kirk White. I am your state representative. And, um, and I am on the uh, House Commerce and Economic Development Committee. And um, the House in uh, this year is really focusing on uh, workforce development and all the things that uh, get in the way of that. And so, uh, part of what we're trying to do is uh, a lot of our companies that can't find enough workers who are qualified, so we're trying to find ways to, to incentivize and, and, and remove blocks to those kind of uh, those things, trying to get uh, more, more money into uh, nursing education, uh, trying to improve our uh, career and technical education programs because, you know, uh, try and get a plumber these days, right? <laughs> so, um, uh, the, the legislature as a whole is working on uh, workforce development. We're also working on uh, some companies have said, well, you know, I, I've got somebody from out of state that will work for my company, but when, I, when they try to come here, they can't find any place to live. And so, housing is another issue that, that is uh, getting a lot of attention in the legislature, and then also, Young families try to move here, and there's no child care. And so again, that's another thing. And one of the things that, as I'm sure your past representative can, can attest is, is in the legislature there, things tend to be what they call silo. Everyone's got their area of expertise, and no one talks to anyone outside of their area of expertise. 
And, and so instead what happens is no real pro no real solutions happen. Everything sort of, you know, well, we'll just take care of our part. And the legislature is trying really hard at this point to, to overcome that. And so there are a lot of uh, committees that are being created, work, uh, working groups and stuff that are crossing those lines. So that the committees that are doing workforce development and committees that are doing housing and child care and you know, all those are actually working on these collectively to try and break down these barriers. That's a large part of what your legislature's working on. My own committee has um, been working on you know, it's commerce and economic development. The economic development stuff is, is fun because we're, we're trying to find ways to, to help businesses get started and grow in the state. And then there's uh, commerce, and commerce is uh, exciting things like insurance regulation. Uh, which after uh, I leave here in a couple of days, I'm, I'm going to a four-day conference on insurance regulation, and uh, I can't imagine that will that'll be more fun than I, uh, I, I can imagine. Uh, so, uh, but uh, my own committee, uh, Commerce uh, Economic Development, uh, big things we've been working on, we've been working on a large bill for workforce development. Again, um, you know, trying to um, get more trained, skilled workers in every sector, including uh, healthcare, nursing, construction, education, teachers, uh, again, uh, child uh, care providers, um, all those things. We're, so we're really working on that. Another thing we're trying to do is we're trying to, uh, the pandemic really showed a lot of problems with our unemployment insurance process. And uh, you know, a lot of people fell through the cracks, a lot of people it didn't work for. And, and so my committee is the one that, that gets to uh, 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 kind of, you know, tear that apart and see what we can do to make it work better for people. One of the other things my committee has been working on is um, there's a program called uh, the Vermont Employment Growth Incentive Program. They call it VEGGIE. And, and it's supposed to incentivize businesses to hire you know, to start more jobs, get more jobs. And, and at this point where the question is, is we've got lots of jobs, we don't have enough people to fill them. And so the question is, is, is this, we're, we're throwing $5 million a year into this program and is that really a good use of our money? And a lot of people on my committee don't think it is. And so, uh, um, but you know, you, you have uh, state uh, bodies that have been running something for a while and, they sort of like to keep running it. And uh, so we're, 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 we're struggling and battling with them about it. Other things are data privacy. My committee is really looking into data privacy. You know, what happens when somebody steals your data and, and sells it on the internet and how we can we can cut down on that and reduce that. And, uh, and so other kinds of things like that. That's what my committee does. Um, if you haven't seen, um, I post, <laughs> three exhausted posts on French porch, front porch forum and uh, and also on my uh, Facebook page and I have an email list. And so if you want to know the minutia of uh, what goes on up there, uh, it, it, I can happily uh, share it with you. I also really try to explain to people how things work there and how they don't so that if you've got a problem and you want to figure out how to get your problem resolved, I try to give you advice on how to, to get that to happen, and certainly if there's anything I can do to get involved to, to uh, you know, with state agencies that are kind of stonewalling you, uh, I'm always available to do that. So um, I hope you'll reach out to me. I'm always looking forward to, to hearing from people and uh, and trying to represent you as best as best as possible. Um, so thank you, and thank you for letting me be here. Thanks. Thank you, Representative Blake. Appreciate the time. All right, we will get into the um, business of the night um, with our uh, warning. Um, the town of Rochester, Vermont, annual town meeting to be held Monday night, March 6, 2023, 7 p.m., Rochester School Auditorium. The legal voters of the town of Rochester, County of Windsor, State of Vermont, are hereby notified and warned to meet in the Rochester School Auditorium, 222 South Main Street in said town on Monday, March 6, 
2023 at 7 p.m. to transact the following business. If there are no objections, I will not read the entire warning, but I'll read each article as we go through them and approach them. Frank. That's a first piece of business. Yep. Um, no, through no objections, not reading the entire one. We'll um, we'll start with Article One. Article One to elect a moderator for the ensuing year. Martha. Um, I would like to nominate Deanna Kennedy to uh, be elected as moderator. Deanna Kennedy has been nominated. Any other nominations? Oh, uh, tip. Really, we don't typically don't need seconds for um, officers, but. Um, I appreciate the thought. <laughs> Any other nominations? Then we'll close nominations. And I'll ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Dan McKinley for moderator, which begins now. I'm going to put out lawn signs next year to campaign for the moderator. <laughs> Uh, Article 2, to elect all town officers required by law. Uh, first in that article is to select, a, to elect a select board term, a select board member for a three-year term. Nancy. Nancy Foley. Um, I'd like to nominate Freddie Sedbury, 68 and a half years. Nancy Foley. Um, I'd like to nominate Freddie Sedbury, 68 and a half years. Nancy Foley. I would like to second that. Seconded? I already second that. Um, Frank, could you have? I'm going to second Okay. Yeah. Any other nominations for select board? And I will uh, close nominations. And I'll ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Frank Severy or select board member for a uh, three year term. Welcome back. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Number two of Article Two, to elect a lister for a three-year term. Nominations. In back. Jeff Arsenal, I'll nominate Louis Donet. Louis Donet is nominated. Second. Seconded by Frank. Any other nominations? Seeing none, we will close nominations. And ask the clerk to cast one ballot. For Louis Donet for Lister for a term of three years. Louis, really? congratulations. <laughs> Number three of Article Two is to elect a collector of delinquent taxes for a term of one year. Congratulations. I would like to nominate Rebecca Klein. Rebecca Klein has been nominated. Any other nominations? Seeing no other nominations, we'll close close nominations. And no, um, don't need a second on, on officers. Um, um, ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Rebecca Klein for um, collector of delinquent taxes for a term of one year. Congratulations, Rebecca, if you're here. Let's see. Um, number four. To elect a library trustee for a five-year term. Nominations, Frank. I nominate Doreen Jones. Doreen Jones has been nominated. Okay. Any other nominations? Diane Ritten. Okay. All right. Doreen Jones has been nominated. And I don't see any other nominations, so we'll close nominations and we'll ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Doreen Jones for library trustee for a five-year term. Number five of Article Two is to elect a trustee of public funds for a three-year term. Nominations. Nancy. Nancy Mike Harvey's been nominated. Okay. Other nominations? Seeing no other nominations, we'll 
close nominations and ask the clerk to cast one ballot for to, for Mike Harvey for trustee of public funds for a three-year term. Thank you, Mike, if you're here. Help me out. See you. Uh, number six of Article Two to elect a cemetery commissioner for a five-year term. Nominations, Nancy. Nancy Foley. Uh, I'd like to nominate Tom Buckett. Tom Buckett has been nominated. Any other nominations? Seeing no other nominations, we'll close nominations and ask the clerk to cast uh, one ballot for Tom Paquette for cemetery commissioner for a five-year term. Congratulations, Tom. All right. <laughs> Article three, uh, shall the voters authorize payment of real taxes in four installments with due dates being Tuesday, August 15, 2023, Wednesday, November 15, 2023, Thursday, February 15, 2024, and Wednesday, May 15, 2024, by physical delivery to the tax collector before 4 p.m. on those dates with postmarks not accepted as proof of delivery. Someone like to move that article? Nancy moves. Second? Seconded? Any discussion? Right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. I said it. Articles passed. Article four, shall the voters authorize total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,313,277, of which $921,967 shall be raised as taxes. We get someone to move it and second it. We'll get right into the discussion. Frank moves it and second. Somebody want to second that? Uh, Nancy, I mean, sorry, Sandy, second. Any discussion? In the back there, is that Kevin? Would this be the correct time to propose an amendment to the article? It would be. I would like to propose that we raise this amount slightly. I never thought I'd say that, but here I am. <laughs> and the amount would be. $3,248, and that would make up the amount that Granville First Response requested for their services for the upcoming fiscal year. It's a small amount of money, but it would be a great show of support for the volunteers to do this to that agency. Uh. Fresh my memory, do I need a second on that? So the number was 3,248. Okay. Um. I didn't quite hear exactly what the reason for this. It had something to do with first response, but I couldn't hear the whole thing. I'm sorry. The Ramble first response asked for uh, a certain amount of money. It was cut by the 3,000. Two hundred and forty-eight dollars. Uh, like I say, it, it's not a lot of money, but it, it would show support for the volunteers. Right. Um, discussion on this, Patty. Did you want to? I do not see. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. The organization Granville First Responders, which is GFR, was developed after our own Valley Ambulance Services ceased operations due to several reasons. GFR arrives on a medical scene without an ambulance, so can only provide initial first aid or CPR, not able to transport. The GP GFR funding comes from Rochester, Hancock, and Granville, and is based on population. The WERBA budget, White River Valley Ambulance, 
for Rochester had a significant jump in their funding requests for this upcoming year. We value their service as they are highly qualified and capable of providing first responder care and transportation both timely and consistently. It was the select board's decision to support the increase of WERVA and to continue to fund GFR at a lower funding figure to continue to support the team and encourage improvements. This was a notice sent to GFR on January 11th. And thank you for the time spent in preparing both initial budget presentation and secondary information regarding the finances and operations of the Granville First Response during the past year and expectations of the upcoming budget year. The select board members of Rochester also must consider the quality of service, services rendered to its population along with the cost and have made the decision for the budget year of July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024 to reduce the funding to Granville First Response to $3,500. The select board is still very supportive of the first responders and are pleased to continue to support supply support to this organization. We fully expect to see a larger and more available membership and better coverage during daytime hours in the next 12 months, plus the issues surrounding dispatching worked out so that communications are at the optimum speed and quality. Once these goals have been achieved, we will be more than pleased to consider support at higher levels. I would suggest keeping records during the upcoming budget year on a Rochester per call basis to present data that supports improvement to our budget and finance committee in the fall of 2023. The end of that letter. It is our sincere hope to see improvements to the infrastructure and response rate for GFR, which is why we continue to place support to the organization. It was not an easy decision during a year of very high increase in our tax rate to decide where tax dollars are best spent. Since January, WERVA has had conversations with GFR on how WERVA could help support GFR and its members. A plan moving forward is to meet with first response service chiefs throughout our valley to better their services with education, training, and recruitment for all in our valley and beyond. GFR has contacted the Vermont EMS office to explore transport capability licensing. An increase in response rates since December of 2022 has also been noted. GFR is working on resolving dispatching issues and we are currently working out questions about their budgeting figures. Once we feel we have the correct figures and continue improvement in response rates, along with a regenerated alliance with WERVA, the select board will once again revisit funding requests from GFR. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, I'm <clears throat> to jump around a little bit. Kevin proposed an amendment. I need a second to that. And then, thank you. So, <clears throat> discussion. Go ahead. About a month ago, I had a medical issue and I had to call 911. And I, for one, and I'm sure my family were damn happy when Granville showed up. Um, they were there, oh, a good 20 minutes before Werva showed up. Not that that's Werva's problem, it's logistics. I mean, they're on the other side of the mountain. Um, and, like, I agree with Kevin, that's not a lot of money not for peace of mind and for getting help when somebody needs it. Yes, um, unfortunately, listening to what Patty has written and I assume is the statement of the select board, it sounds to me more like a punishment. And it's a punishment to the Granville group who have been very, very, responsive to the needs of Rochester. And what is a person's worth $3,000 when we divide it in the people in this town? I think what Kevin has offered is something that we all ought to stand up and vote for. Larry and then Kevin. <coughs> Larry Strauss. Um, so I, I'd just like to talk about two things. Uh, I'm basically in agreement that we should uh, 
find the Granville request. But, but I also want to just talk to the uh, technical point that the uh, select board budget is a lump sum uh, that the select board is not required to spend uh, in accordance with the individual budget uh, lines of the budget. Um, so I just want everyone to realize that adding $3,500 to the budget does not require the select board to direct it towards Granville. Um, and they could just as well um, deduct $3,500 from any place else in the current budget and leave it at its current funding rate. Um, there, there's no requirement once we appropriate funds in this budget article that the select board direct each dollar to the individual line items as outlined in the budget. Um, but uh, I think it would be politically wise for them to do so. Um, <laughs> but there's no requirement for them to do so um, and there is a difference between transport and first response and i think that i think that they're both critical needs but they're different needs and a robust first response is just as important as transport um, and they shouldn't be misunderstood as the same thing. Um, they're both extremely important. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to ask the question, how do you <coughs> expect them to upgrade on less money? Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you repeat the question? Your mic. A basic question was, how do you expect them to upgrade for less money? Which is a logical question. Yeah. I suppose the um, after a long discussion at the budget meetings, the the um, the motivation for this was actually to just inspire a little more um, attention and, and bring attention and discussion to the whole issue, and hopefully. Um, like the conversations about expanding, you know, the possibility of Werva working with them to possibly have an ambulance, uh, a transportable ambulance located in this valley, like we used to have with the rescue squad, would be an ideal outcome. And so this was was um, meant to serve as a, as just a to shake things up and, and inspire conversation and and bring attention and appreciation to what we do have, and we're thankful for them. Sir Mason? Yes, uh, did the select board consider asking the public trust fund to help out in this situation? I mean, last year we did 12,000 for heating fuel for the building we don't own. I mean, 3,000 from the tr uh, trust fund would have been a good use. We're always asking the trustees of public funds to more money. Yeah. 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 Further discussion? I think, I think for some clarification on how this all came about, we were in the, the thrills of the budget finance meetings. Uh, we started them in September. We request that all uh, departments send their budgets into us. And then we start going through them piece by piece. A couple years ago, we switched uh, Granville to, from appropriation to the uh, general fund. And we also did that with WERVA because we considered them emergency services. We had requested Granville to come in to talk about their budget with uh, us the budget and finance committee and the select board and we just didn't have time to have them in and we had a lot of questions we had a lot of complaints that they weren't showing up for calls so we had to make a decision and we had to put a budget before the committee 
and before the select board to adopt so we could get it in print. And this was how it came about. And it brought out the conversation. We knew this was gonna happen and we were glad it did. So I have no problem putting the money back in, but I think in the future, it needs to be transparent on how they run their business and we need to know how it goes. And that's just the way it is for the budget and finance. And that's how it came about. We didn't do it to punish them. We just did it because we didn't know where the money was going. Hey, Frank. I'd like to uh, ask for a restatement of the amendment, and then I'd like to meet the question. Okay, so the, um, the amendment is to increase the amounts of Article 5 um, by a amount of 3,248. Do I have that number right? Article 4. 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 Article uh, we'll have a vote on um, the amendment. The amendment is to increase the amount of Article 4 um, under the authorization of the Highway and General Fund expenditures by an increase of $3,248. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. I have it. The um, article is amended. Um, um, I think my math is okay. Has anyone else done math? Nine hundred and twenty-five thousand two hundred fifteen. Somebody check that. Right, it'll be the amount to be raised by taxes. And the same amount for the um, expenditures. Increase that same amount. Say that number again. Yeah, total expenditures. Which number do you want? I was looking for the shall be raised by taxes number. Three thousand. Uh, the number to be raised by taxes is nine hundred twenty-one thousand nine hundred sixty-seven plus. Three thousand two hundred forty-eight. Nine twenty-five. Nine twenty-five. Two fifty. Okay. Yeah. And then can you add that same amount to the um, uh, expenditures of yes. one point three million? Article 4 as amended, shall the voters authorize total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,316,525, of which $925,215 shall be raised by taxes. All right. Um, I guess we have to move, uh, move that and second it. Are you going to move that? Okay. Jeff and Sandy. Um, discussion. Yes, Tim. Hi, Tim Crowley. Um, you know, the, the oftentimes we get sort of caught up in a rabbit hole of, you know, $3,000 and whatever that those numbers come out to. What I'm hearing is a bigger issue. This harkens back to the days of, um, you know, the rescue squad when it was our neighbors who were there to to take care of us. And we've, over the years, really surrendered, um, you know, local control of our own care. And now we contract it out at a, at a hefty price. And we could probably debate whether that's more money or less money or good, gooder or better or not better service. What I would ask the select board to do now is consider the question is, what is the vehicle that we have as a community 
to facilitate this relationship between these folks in Granville who are really trying hard, but apparently not succeeding at the level we'd like, I guess, um, and hook them up with WERVA, people to whom we pay considerable dollars. I could be telling you something that you already know, but it sounds to me like, I mean, this is an important matter one that I don't want us to resolve over debates about $3,000 and people missing budget meetings, but one that says we care about the first response to people here in Rochester. And I guess I'm wondering what is the vehicle that we have as a community to make sure that somebody is spearheading that relationship and encouraging this group in Granville and WERVA to do what we need here in Rochester. Yes, actually, it is on the agenda to appoint a representative to the Granville First Response next week, and we've already been in contact with WERDA, so that's what yeah, it's on. Further discussion on the article as amended? Seeing none, we'll move to end discussion and move to a vote. I'm going to read the article again. Shall the voters authorize total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,316,525, of which $925,215 shall be raised by taxes? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The article passes. <clears throat> Article 5, shall the voters appropriate $49,935 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library? Move and second, please. <coughs> Carrie moves. Verma seconds. Second. Discussion. Seeing no discussion on this article, we'll move. To vote. Shall the voters appropriate $49,935 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The Article 5 passes. Article 6. Shall the voters appropriate $21,420 to continue funding the North Star Recycling Program from July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2024. Move and second, that's what we need now. Martha moves and seconded by Sandy. Thank you. Discussion? I just wanted to say how lucky I feel that we have that are there every Saturday at the town office. Um, they're, you know, not only is it a valuable service for all of us, but I have trouble moving around sometimes and they're very kind to help me with the stuff I have. And um, it's just, it's just, a, it's a good service for our, for our town going to have it. <laughs> Further discussion? Yes, thank you. Frank, yeah, did you have your hand up? I mean, that's, that's just like Ms. Nome or anyhow. You know, just North Star recycling, just North Star recycling and all sorts of people's trash. So it's a real, it's a federal service. Every, um, you know, every first, you know, every first Saturday and every third Saturday. So, so it's not a week. I don't know. No, I, I, they pick up. <laughs> Anyhow, but um, I'm saying it's recycling and also pick up a try for the same thing. Further discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote on Article 6. Shall the voters appropriate $21,420 to continue funding the North Star Recycling Program from July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2024. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Article 6 passes. Article 7. Shall the voters appropriate $8,000 
to fund the reappraisal reserve fund. Moved by. Okay. And this is going to be moved by Burma <laughs> and seconded by Catherine. Discussion on this article? And Frank, oh, and then Leslie. Now, what is, um, so there's a reappraisal re coming uh, within one time frame, <coughs> and um, what, is, what is triggering that? <coughs> The state of Vermont sets pretty much a lot of the tax rates for education based on the appraised value of our property. That's the most important part. Um, when our property values, as they set in place, uh, drop below a certain threshold, then the state actually will call us to do a reappraisal. Uh, back in the day, uh, reappraisals were automatically done every 10 years. So um, we have this <laughs> double whammy coming at us that um, our common level of appraisal has dropped to an area that would be close to us needing to have a reappraisal call. And we, our last reappraisal was done in 2012. Um, perhaps Louie could speak more on that. Um, but. Uh, in anticipation of that, the state does give us funding towards this of, I think it's over $6,000 a year. But um, if we have to start doing a reappraisal within the next year or two, we still won't have enough money to to complete the process. So we're, we're saving up for what inevitably seems to be a reappraisal coming at us in the next couple of years. Leslie? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Catherine, did you have? Kirk. I think we're all aware of the fact that during the pandemic there was extreme uh, escalation of the market value of a lot of our homes. Has that affected the result of the lowering uh, of being our appraised it was price being lower than it should be? And if so, what if that levels out over the next couple of years? Can we then be paying higher taxes because the property that sold? The taxes are based on what the budget is. So um, taxes wouldn't necessarily go up because of the value of your house. Um, if the values move, the tax rate moves with it. We just need to generate this amount of money. Um, values of real estate have been higher in the last couple of years. Um, we are actually pretty lucky because some towns have jumped way beyond the threshold and um, are experiencing a pretty large tax rate hike for their education tax because of that. So if we, if we hold on and all your values go down, um, yeah, it could, it could possibly turn around. Um, I, I'm not sure, what is our CLA right now? 80, 87%. It drops down below 75, which many other towns have. Um, then, then it would pretty much trigger a reappraisal. So it could go back up in the next couple of years. It's, it's a market, so. Further discussion? No further discussion, we'll move to a vote on Article 7, Child Voters Appropriate $8,000 to fund the reappraisal reserve fund. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. I said it. Article 7 passes. Article 8. Shall the voters approve the creation of a skate space donation reserve fund and authorize transfer of the donations, donations received from the Muscoma Bank GoFundMe account and monies previously appropriated by the town for skate space? Martha moves, seconded by Catherine. Discussion. Is 
Having no discussion, we'll move to a vote on Article 8. Shall the voters approve the creation of a state space donation reserve fund and authorize transfer of the donations received from the Muscoma Bank GoFundMe account and monies previously appropriated by the town for state space? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Nice us have it. Article 8 passes. Article 9. <clears throat> Shall the voters approve the creation and, appro and appropriate $12,000 to Highway Grant Projects Reserve Fund? Moved by Verma, seconded by Kevin. I think I saw you. You might have been scratching your head, but you got a second out of that. Um, discussion. Oh, Kelly. Could we have oh. an explanation of the fund? An explanation of the fund. Please. <laughs> um, this grant project reserve fund was put in place um, at the advice from the budget and finance. And basically what it is is when we receive a grant or when we apply for grants, there is a matching funding that goes along with those grants. And in the past, since COVID and during COVID, we had grants that traveled over a couple different years. And so some of the matching money is, it's kind of in a gray area where we don't really know. <laughs> we couldn't move it in between two years and so we decided to establish this reserve fund grant so to cover those expenses during a calendar year or a fiscal year and that's what the, this is there is some in the in the road budget that's at the bottom of uh, for last year that they put in but they never marked the funds as a reserve fund so this is just to cover any grants that we get for highway projects that we have to pay a match of 10 to 20% of the grant. And, and it's an estimation that we use um, for the grants that we have coming up for this fiscal, this uh, budget year. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yep. You good, Kelly? That's what I was gonna ask the same thing, thank you, sorry. Yep. Further discussion on the article? No discussion, we will move to a vote. Article 9, shall the voters approve the creation and, and appropriate $12,000 to the Highway Grant Projects Reserve Fund. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it, the Article 9 passes. Article 10, shall the voters appropriate $1,000 to fund the Tennis Reserve Fund? Moved by Barbara, seconded by Leslie. Thank you. Uh, discussion. No discussion. We'll go to a vote. In Article 10. Shall the voters appropriate $1,000 to fund the Tennis Reserve Fund? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Article 10 passes. Article 11, shall the voters vote to appropriate the following sums as requested by these community agencies. Central Vermont Council on Aging, $3,000. Clare, Clare, Clare Martin Center, $2,066. Greenup, Vermont, $100. Orange County Parent Child Center, $250. Quintown Senior Center, $9,849. Safe Line Incorporated, $250. Tri-Valley Transport, formerly Stagecoats, $1,300. Vermont Rural Fire Hydrants, $100. Vermont Visiting Nurse, uh, excuse me, Visiting Nurse Association, $4,800. White River Partnership, $875. And Women Safe, $250. For a total of $22,840. Moved by. Thurman, seconded. All right, Joe, thank you. Uh, discussion on this article? 
Yes, sir. Where are these figures coming from? Yeah, these these figures are from the agencies requesting the money. Yeah. And they are level funded from the previous budget. Further discussion? No further discussion, we will move to votes on Article 11. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the following sums as requested by these community agencies? And if there are no objections, I'll just give you the total. $22,840. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. Article 11 passes. Article 12, to transact any other legal and proper business bought, brought before said meeting. Yes. Mm. So um, currently, um, since um, Vic Robato stepped down from being our emergency management coordinator. The select board has been filling that role by default, but um, we are definitely open and soliciting interested in anyone else that would like to step up and, and take that position. You don't have to do anything unless there's an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, you don't have to make that decision tonight. But you can, What's the, what's the title? One, one sec. What's the title? That would be the emergency management coordinator. Yeah. Um, I had a hand over here. Yeah, Dick. Dick is, uh, we have to all thank our town highway crew for a great job they've done. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think any of them are here to hear that they're all out working or sleeping. Here. So. Catherine, did you have, have something? Well, having been part of the uh, COVID-19 uh, task force, I, I just wanted to thank Vic for his years of service in that role. Um, and so I know in the event of an emergency, what that could entail. Yeah. So I hope that you find Good Any other business to be uh, brought before the group? Yes, sir. Um, so Catherine and I are here tonight as uh, co-chairs of the High School Repurposing Committee. Uh, we put a four-page report uh, in your booklet, and then there's a two-page addendum with uh, cost detail and repair costs for the building. Uh, we just wanted to take uh, the opportunity to respond to any questions people may have or comments about the project. Uh, we had intended that there would be a vote on it about the town except uh, acquiring or not acquiring this month. That's not going to happen. We just don't have enough information about the condition of the building and the environmental assessment of the building and the grounds to provide an informed update on the uh, condition of the building. Uh, and the process is underway with uh, the involvement of the state uh, environmental uh, conservation department and other state agencies. We don't anticipate that information is going to be available until later in the summer. Uh, so we're anticipating that uh, the vote that we've been talking about for the past year and more probably fix it. It's probably not going to happen until later in this year. So let me just pause with that and see if there are any questions about the project for Catherine. Uh, Catherine, yeah. So as the project progresses, is there going to be information Yes. Yeah. 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 The question was whether or not there would be informational meetings about the project as it progresses. The answer is yes. Uh, they will be warned and made publicly available, either have them here or Zoom or both or in some fashion so people can participate. We also have monthly meetings that are now being warned and you can participate in those meetings. 
if you go to the website too, you can be a part of a regular email list because we try to generate monthly reports on the project updates so that things are transparent. Um, I think one of the last times we, we of course we presented publicly uh, in July the feasibility <laughs> study and we've been regularly attending both school board meetings and select board meetings to bring updates, working with both both systems. Uh, and uh, we are, at this point, feeling like we've really got the floodway issue resolved with a property boundary adjustment. Uh, and I think now it's back in, this, in the school's uh, attorney's uh, court to finalize all of that. We um, recently, uh, on February 10th, met with uh, John Booker Campbell, who is the floodplain manager for this region, because the building took water in through that door during Irene. And the consultant architect, Greg Gossens, who was part of the feasibility study team, has uh, put forth multiple suggestions uh, for uh, mitigation. And uh, that's being reviewed right now. Uh, we're hoping to have a meeting of Grace Vinson, who is the state environmental officer, John back again, and uh, an engineer from Dubai King, who's been doing all the surveys for us, uh, to sort of really hone in on a final uh, decision that would best mitigate the, the floodplain issue, but also retain the, the use of the auditorium. So. It's a long process. We're really navigating a regulatory landscape that we didn't fully anticipate when we got involved in this, but we're learning a lot as we go along. I think it's interesting to note that to date, we have received funding in the amount of $91,900 some dollars towards this project through various grants and agencies and also private funding. The, uh, the HEAT Task Force, uh, which uh, includes members of the repurposing committee and the school board has raised to date $10,535, the Rochester portion of it, and there's more activities being planned. Uh, do you want to speak to those additional activities, the fundraising activities that are being planned? Leslie's got, oh, she doesn't want to speak. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned. They look like they're going to be very good. So. Could you talk about the project manager, who that person is, and what your project manager is doing? So, so we had some uh, planning grant funds uh, remaining after the feasibility study, and uh, the town hired Liz Curry, uh, who has a company called Common Lands L Limited or something like that. And uh, she was brought onto the project to help establish a, a roadmap. And she said to us in our most recent meeting that the committee themselves has really been working successfully with various uh, agency representatives and that until we resolve the floodplain issue, she didn't feel that she could take us any further. And we asked her, in her experience, which is mainly private development, uh, had she ever done the eight-factor analysis that is necessary for HUD. And she said, no, that we walk away at that point. So she really doesn't have the kind of experience that this, this project is at right now. And it's also a community-driven project. We're not a private developer. <clears throat> so Liz, we will re return to Liz once we resolve this. Um, but and there may be we reached a place where it didn't make sense to put any more money since we're going to have to <coughs> put money in other places. We, we have to get by this floodplain issue and a solution that's going to work from a regulatory practice standpoint, then revisit the issue of project management and what kind of count we need and where would we get the money to pay for that. Mitch, I just want to add something to this and I'm glad so many people are here to hear it. Um, Catherine and Vic over the last three years have spent hundreds of hours researching this project and doing all the groundwork up to this day. Um, they have met with numerous agencies and officials and have gone through, Catherine has written many grants and they have worked in really 
um, at creating a body of information that all of us can rely on and return to, to educate ourselves, to inform ourselves to what's involved with this project. There is a lot going on with it. It's a complicated issue. The agencies are so, it's bureaucracy. So gee, you can just imagine. And they've been dealing with it. And it's benefited not only for us, but the town in general, because somebody would have to be doing this information in order to inform us what do we do with this building? Because we all want to make an educated you know, decision about this and not just have it be an emotional response of how much we love this school or how much we hate this school. You, we want to have the figures and the information there to make that decision. And they have done the work. So I just want to applaud both of you. and it's not over with. And if we just look around here at the auditorium itself to what we have right now, the thought of not having this would be heartbreaking for most of us. There are so many memories that take place here, but it's not about the memories, it's about how do we move forward in this town? What do we want to offer <laughs> anyone else, not only who is here, but who we would like to come here and enjoy this community as much as we do, because we all love it here. And this is a really big asset that I think all of us would tremendously miss if it wasn't here. But I just want to say, I so applaud the work that you do, you. and you. Uh, I think we're all benefit from it. So that's my say on it, folks. Any other business to come before said me? Larry. Yeah, uh, Larry. Uh, Dan, with the uh, permission and good grace of my neighbors here, I'll take that responsibility to act as coordinator coordinator for emergency services. I hope there's some training. <laughs> business, yes. I have just one question, and it's, it's about public bathrooms. So many people come to town, and there's no public bathrooms. Is there any discussion about public bathrooms? Well, and if, if there were, where would it begin? Yes, we do have um, money in the budget that keeps going up for a uh, selection of porta potties that we put around town in the summer and like was it last year or the year before that we started putting one off the park and the more centrally located as well as down by the tennis courts and there's the one adjacent to the fire station. But yeah, that's um that's a, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. we, we have talked about it. I mean there was a thought about the old fire station maybe, but you know, you it's um it's it's a, it gets complicated. It gets to be a, a no, I won't say that. <laughs> Anything else? We we'll go to the group. Yes, Dean. Purposing committee, and I want to invite you all to the a neighbor event which has uh, been graciously uh, offered by the fire department to have a, um, a place where we can all come from 11 to 3 on March 12th to discuss. Um, we're, we're actually looking for new neighbors who, who, who have showed up here in the last three or four years um, and uh, also all the other services that are provided in this town. Um, so the services will be, they'll have tables. There'll be a touch of truck by the fire department, and we really appreciate the, the use of the firehouse. Uh, I just wanted to give you all a, um, 
a warm welcome down there and hope you can show up for an open house and uh, tell your neighbors, the new people in town, we would love to see you. Thank you. Anyone else? Before we entertain a motion to adjourn. Kelly. I would move, move to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor. <laughs> Anyone opposed to that? All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you all.